Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I am Yukai Chow, and this is the Beginner's Guide to Gamification, episode number four. I, of course, am the co-founder of Reward Me, gamification pioneer and speaker at Stanford University, or I like to call myself a gamification go sue. But more importantly, I'm here to teach you about gamification, how to apply it, how to make it awesome, and dominate the world with gamification. So last time we talked about the eight core drives of gamification. Today we want to put it together and show you what Octalysis is. Looks like I'm going to be taking a red eye trip. Octalysis is the gamification framework that I created. It is an analysis on how gamified a system is, and not just because it has badges or it has points, but just really see how well does it appeal to the core drives. And more importantly, look at how can something be more gamified, can be improved, can be better designed into a more comprehensive, elegant, and actionable step. And it's called Octalysis because it's based on an octagon shape. Well, there's a lot of frameworks out there. It's a lot harder to really know exactly how to apply gamification to new products and create value. So the reason why I created a framework is because I wanted something that people could make actionable. Basically, say, oh, we can better gamify the system um, by adding more social pressure, or we can add more unpredictability and curiosity into the system. The end goal is really to make something that is very actionable and usable to help anyone gamify their products. And of course, increase in user engagement and motivation. All right, let's check out Octalysis. This is Yukai Chow signing off from my awesome face into boring interface. And so here we have a octagon shape. As you can see, there are eight words which represent the A core drives of gamification. As you may recall, the eight drives are epic meaning and calling, development and accomplishment, empowerment of creativity and feedback. I am Yukai the White. Ownership and possession, social pressure. Now I'm Batman. Scarcity and impatience. Unpredictability and curiosity. Loss and avoidance. Broccoli. I'm so full, I'm going to die. So now we have all eight of them graphed here on this octagon shape. And you know, you have epic meaning and calling, we have accomplishment development, empowerment of creativity and feedback, all eight of them are here. And so once you have all eight of them here, you can start to figure out what are the game mechanics that go along with it. So with epic meaning and calling, there are th game mechanics that you can add to, like adding narrative to it, adding elitism into the system, creating a sense of a humanity hero, giving them some beginner's luck. When you look at empowerment, you give them milestone unlocks, you give them boosters, you give them chain combos. And within development accomplishment, we have our usual favorites, the points, badges, and leaderboards. But we also got our progress bar. We also have a little bit more interesting things like crowning, level up symphony, juicy feedback, euro effect. Uh, with ownership, that's when you have virtual goods, uh, build from scratch, which is because you build something from scratch, you have your you feel ownership to it. And really, you can get all the stuff together. And how to apply octalysis is that whenever you're looking at a product, you apply this map onto that product and think about what does the product already have and what does the product need to make it better gamified. That's amazing, you guys. Thank you, David Cash. But there's more. If you look at all the core drives and you kind of feel a pattern within it, you'll notice that the core drives on the right side of the octagon shape are the right brain core drives, which are the ones that control more social uh, elements, creativity, and the like. Whereas the ones on the left are left brain uh, core drives, which are more about calculations, ownership, figuring things out. And if you would also notice that the things on the top are a little bit more positive, right? They're meaning, there's accomplishment, the things that make you feel good about yourself. So I classify them as white hat gamification. And the ones on the bottom are a little bit more negative. You know, you're doing something because it's so unpredictable, because it's scarce, because you want to avoid 
a loss. And so I classify that as black hat gamification. So if you're doing something because it makes your life more meaningful, it makes you feel like you have accomplishments, and it feels like you are express your creativity. That's obviously very, very positive, and you're wearing a white hat. If you're doing something just because you can't have it, just because you don't know what's coming, or to avoid a loss, that's a little bit of the black hat gamification. So is black hat gamification bad, you kind? Very good question, Hanway. Black hat gamification is not necessarily bad. Again, these are just the core drives that motivate us to do things. And whether it's good or bad depends on what we're doing. For instance, gambling uses unpredictability heavily, and so it makes people addicted to gambling, and that's obviously very, very bad. But I would love to be addicted to eating carrots and go to the gym often, and so maybe it would utilize black hat gamification, but it's still something that's desirable. One example is when people uh, pay money for a trainer, right? They force you to work out, and it's using a little bit of the black hat gamification end of things. I've also seen uh, alarm clocks where if you click the snooze button, it'll burn a dollar or it'll, it'll take a dollar away from you. And so again, you're waking up due to the drive of loss and avoidance. Now let's look at an example using octalysis. Thank you. Let's look at some examples. So when you are looking at a company, you can analyze how they do on each core drive. So let's look at Facebook. Facebook, you know, they're a little bit weak on meaning, they're a little weak on scarcity, but it has an amazing social pressure score. It has a little bit of unpredictability and empowerment, you know, a little bit more than the five points mark. And it has a huge amount of ownership, right? Because you built your profile from scratch. All your friends are there. It's your profile. It's yours. And then they have a huge score on avoidance because you can't quit Facebook because all your friends are there and all the points and virtual goods you accumulate are all there. So if you quit Facebook today, if suddenly it's removed today, you're going to be panicking. I have a lot of friends that I only keep in touch on Facebook. I don't have their phone numbers or their email addresses. And we are real life friends. We hang out. And so, Lost and Void is very powerful Facebook. Uh, Farmville, as you can see, it's very interesting. It's very left brain oriented, and it's black hat gamification oriented too. Uh, won't go into details due to lack of time. Um, also, Diablo. Diablo is actually pretty balanced, but it doesn't excel at anything. Diablo 3 specifically. So, it only has an Octalysis score of 284. And Twitter. Twitter is pretty good. It's very utilizing the right side of your brain, which is creativity and social. And overall, it's decent. It has 267 points in the Octalysis score. And then we have some, some things like Zamzi, which are clearly, clearly whitehead gamification. And funny things like Gun O'Clock, which is, as you can see, not very strong gamification, but, you know, it's in the alarm clock market and competition is very low. So good job, Gun O'Clock, for even trying in that market. Later on, we can talk more about the second uh, layers of gamification, which is something that goes in more detail. So for each of those eight drives, there's a lot of other things that happen. For instance, with Epic, Meaning, and Calling, there's a process of onboarding. And again, there's beginner's luck, there's the chosen one gaming mechanic, and there's a few numbers that you can assign to these boxes to really, really f figure out how to improve your gamification and everything. For now, I am going to sign out of Boring Interface. Back to my awesome face. All right, that concludes this episode, which is episode number four of the Beginner's Guide to Gamification. Hope you had fun and that your mind was blown. I'll catch you guys next time. One, two, three, go. Three, two, one, go. Now let's look at an example with Octalysis. Let's try to so get look at the camera and, okay. and show as much excitement and enthusiasm yeah. as you can. Yeah. You ready? Okay, so three, two, one. That's amazing, you guys.